Hey everybody, Jeremy here, and welcome to part two of my massive Funko Pop unbaggings. So the short story to this is I moved and I packed all my Funko Pops in big trash bags. And now I wanna take out a good number of them and display them while still inside their boxes. And I thought this would be the perfect time to show you my complete Funko Pop collection. So if you wanna see the very first video in this little mini series, go ahead and click the link in the description. It's gonna take you to the first part of uh, this little series. And it's also gonna be a card on the screen right now where you can click on that too and look at part one. Now, without further ado, let's look at part two. First thing I noticed out of this bag is that quite a few of my boxes were absolutely crushed. But nonetheless, we're starting things off with good old Space Ghost. Now, how many of you remember Space Ghost Coast to Coast? It was a, um, it was like a little animated talk show in a way, came on Cartoon Network a long time ago um, is when it first debuted. And uh, I just remember staying up late looking at it. Kind of silly, but you know, I liked it. And that's really the only reason why I got Space Ghost because it was that nostalgia factor with Space Ghost. So I'm gonna put this down. We're gonna move on to the next one. And also be forewarned because there's a lot of pops in this bag. This might be a pretty long video, so uh, get comfortable. The second, oh my God, this box is completely destroyed. Oh my God, look at that. But oh well, inside this destroyed box is Majin Buu from Dragon Ball Z. I have uh, quite a few Dragon Ball Z pops, and I don't know, it, it seems like a suitcase must have fallen on the bag in order to explode this box like this. So, with that being said, it looks like Majin Buu isn't going to find his way, um, actually, as a part of this display, unfortunately, because his box is completely destroyed, but the pop is fine, and it's a very good pop. Chocolate Majin Buu was an exclusive, I think at Dragon Con, here in Atlanta, that I didn't go to, because I'm not really into that, but, um, yeah, awesome for anyone who managed to get them. Next up. We have the 2016 Summer Convention exclusive, San Diego Comic-Con, I believe, False God Superman from Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Looks just like the original Superman from that movie. Now, basically, it just has False God written in red letters across his chest, just like we see in the movie. And uh, they also had a Doomsday Pop from GameStop where this came from. It was an exclusive, but that Doomsday was pretty bad. And uh, I don't think it sold very well. You can probably still buy that actually. And I didn't want it because I thought it was overpriced. Now, one of my favorite pops that will definitely definitely be making its way to my display somewhere is the 2016 New York Comic Con shared exclusive limited edition, The Joker from The Killing Joke. I love that film camera. I love the hat. I love the, the the nice Hawaiian shirt. This is a wonderful representation of the Joker from a very, very good story. Happy to say that this box is still in pretty good condition. And I tried to get this guy in North Carolina last year during the hurricane and I could not find him. Came back to Georgia and he was there waiting for me at my closest GameStop. Next up, let's go for a little something more friendly ham. From Toy Story, one of my favorite Pixar, actually, you know what, no, it is my favorite Pixar series, Toy Story, got hand the little piggy bank here, and really, this was part of the 20th anniversary of Toy Story, and um, these were released originally some time ago, but then uh, they were very popular, they were rare, they brought them back, I believe, and uh, yeah, just got ham. So this is another one of those childhood nostalgia buys for me. If you notice, there's a pattern. I like to buy things that remind me of my childhood. Something that doesn't remind me of my childhood, because if it did, I will be horribly scarred, is Gus Fring from Breaking Bad with his face half exploded. It spoiler alert. If you have not, you know, if you don't, if you don't know, then I'm sorry. It's been it's been too long. Statue of limitations has expired. But good old Gus Fring. This is one of my favorite series of all time and this was an amazing scene when this happened so breaking bad gus fring let's move on i'm kind of sad for a couple of reasons one because this box is crushed and two is because it's the crushed box of garris my man garris from the mass effect video game franchise the good one mass effect one two and three andromeda Shame. 
I can't even play it because I just know I'm going to be let down and I will not sour my memories of Mass Effect by playing Andromeda. So sad. But anyway, here's Garrus. I love Garrus. He's my man. I almost shed a tear wondering what happened to Garrus at the end of Mass Effect 3. I don't know. He was running next to me and then he just disappeared. Oh my god. Yeah, so that, that game still tugs at my heartstrings, but yeah, I love Garrus. He's the man. How many of you guys played Mass Effect 3 and at the end, when you and Garrus had that shooting contest, how many of you let Garrus win? I let him win. I let him win. My cat's trying to get in the bag. If she finds any bugs, I hope she kills it, but hopefully Chucky won't come to life and kill all of us. So yep, man, very dusty box. Look at that. And uh, yeah, Chucky from Child's Play. Uh, not the original Child's Play, because you see he's all stitched up. And uh, yeah, I'm not too into, uh, you know, like horror movies and things like that, but definitely Child's Play, Child's Play 2. I was even a fan of Bride of Chucky, you know, but not as much as Child's Play 2. That's the one that I remember the most, and this is Chucky. I also have a Chucky created by Mezco, and uh, that one is also pretty cool, you know, it's more realistic. Oh no, this box has been a little bit crushed, but that's okay. Our hopes and dreams shall not be crushed like this box because we have here from the darkest timeline, 2016 Road to the White House, Bernie Sanders. Now, of course, there were three uh, pops in this. We have Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and Satan. And I wanted to have uh, this Bernie Sanders. I think it probably was one of the more popular ones. I'm not too sure. But this was the last pop that I got before I kind of took that long, long hiatus. So, yep, there we go. It's a little bit crushed, but that's that's okay. That's okay. A pop that I don't know exactly why I got again, because I, I, I don't watch the Flash TV show. It's not that I think it's bad. It's just that I don't watch it. But this is Reverse Flash. And I think I just got them because I like the idea of a uh, reverse flash. Uh, absolutely nothing special about them. I got this guy at GameStop. You can see these were the other ones that were available in that line. The Flash, the Flash Unmasked, Captain Cold, and uh, Captain Cold Unmasked. So yeah, not really sure why you're part of my collection, but when the pop fever struck me, everything was up for grabs. One of my favorite subgenres of Funko Pops came in the Impopster line, and this is the Two-Face Impopster. This was pretty cool. It was based off villains dressing up as Batman. So this was the Two-Face Impopster, and I really like the concept behind this, and I really like the way they look. The decals are great, and they had quite a few to go along with it, and I don't have all the ones that I wanted. But, you know, I have some. There's the Penguin, and then we got Scarecrow, and we had Riddler, and then there was uh, Harley Quinn. But yeah, it was a, it was a decent, uh, decent line. And it kind of reminds me, if anyone remembers, let me know, Gotham City Imposters was a multiplayer game that was available during the PlayStation 3 era. And that game, I thought, was really cool and underrated. I would have liked to have seen that continue at some point, but alas, it has not. All my wrestling fans out here, behold the majesty of Stone Cold Steve Austin, who for some reason was a GameStop exclusive. Not a very awesome pop, you know, it's like, okay, it's Stone Cold, you know, nothing special about it, but you know, if you are a fan of wrestling, then you know the Texas Rattlesnake, one of the biggest draws in professional wrestling history, so of course, as a wrestling huge mega super fan like me, it only makes sense for me to pick up Stone Cold Steve Austin. Also, I'm a huge fan of his podcast. Both the Steve Austin Show and the Steve Austin Show Unleashed, unavailable for free from Podcast One. This is a bit of a weird story for this Toys R Us exclusive Raven. When I put all the pops away, for some reason, I threw away her insert. So she now just kind of flops around in there without an insert. My plan was to get all of the Teen Titans uh, that were Toys R Us exclusives, and I nearly succeeded, but I did not. And maybe we'll get into that during this unbagging, I'm not too sure. But yeah, Toys R Us exclusive, she just does not have her, uh, her inner packing, so I guess she unfortunately will not be part of the display. One of my favorites is the Cheshire Cat, a Hot Topic exclusive, and it is Flock, the Cheshire Cat, this cat is Flock, that means that instead of vinyl material, it's more of a fabric, a very soft fabric. Man, I really wish I had that Flock Bob Ross, that would be amazing. But yeah, um, Alice in Wonderland, I really like Flock Pops, I think that they are great, and um, I love those eyes, look at it, isn't that freaky? Just, just 
disappears into your soul. All right, so now we got some Marvel stuff coming back from two years ago. It is the Funko Summer Exclusive Blackout Ant-Man. I think that's what they refer to this as, Blackout, Blacked Out, something like that. But anyway, it is Ant-Man. And instead of wearing his classic silver and red and a little bit of black, it's now completely red and black. And uh, I really like the helmet on that. I thought that looked pretty cool, really cool. I liked it. The box is a little beat up, but unfortunately, it kind of came that way. So on the back, as you can see, it's not a real lot to see. It's just the regular Ant-Man and the yellow jacket, which he is also somewhere in one of these bags. But yeah, this will be in the Marvel section if I have one. I looked for this one for a decent while until I finally found it. It's the Black Suit Spider-Man, the Walgreens exclusive, and he glows in the dark. And you know, Walgreens pops were just so elusive, some of them were, and this was one of them, and I was very happy to find them. Don't know where I found this guy. Hmm, let me think back. You know, I can't remember at all where I found him, but he glows in the dark. Black suit Spider-Man, look at the back. See what else we got? Green Goblin, Taskmaster, and the Iron Spider. You guys remember that metallic Green Goblin that I think was also a Walgreens exclusive that was crazy hard to get? I didn't get him, but uh, oh well, can't get him all, right? Kind of ironic that I picked this one up right after the Black Suit Spider-Man. This is the Blackest Night Superman, a GameStop exclusive from their first controversial Funko mystery box. The big controversy behind that was they had golden variants of certain pops, such as the Superman here, and they also had a golden Batman, a golden Claptrap, and a in a golden uh, Brotherhood of Steel power armor pop. Problem is, the boxes had really flimsy stickers and there was some weird stuff going on where a lot of people were getting the same pop but no golden ones. Were there shenanigans afoot? Probably. They since fixed that in future iterations of Funko's uh, mystery boxes from GameStop. They wrapped them in plastic unlike the first wave, but I thought I was going to get like a claptrap or Batgirl like everyone else, but I got the Blackest Night Superman and I was kind of happy about that. Everything else in the box, I didn't care for. Oh, this is sad. This is sad because this box is again messed up from one of my favorite childhood movies, even though this movie was not for kids despite the animation, Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I dare you to go look at this movie again as an adult and you will be like, oh my god, my parents let me look at this? That's pretty raunchy. You know, you saw cartoon characters and figured everything must be fine. But no, it was not fine. Oh, poor Jessica Rabbit. Her box won't even stand up. But it's okay. We still love you anyway. Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. We almost got a pretty decent box, but of course it got crushed on the top. So this went along with Ham. I got quite a few of these because I, you know, just wanted to kind of complete my childhood. This Buzz Lightyear, I wish he had a mouth, you know, like at least like a little, you know, pouty lipped mouth or whatever but he has absolutely nothing but a swirly chin but you know the little plastic dome for his helmet is cool i guess star wars the force awakens most disappointing character captain phasma despite her awesome first order stormtrooper chromed out attire had a very unspectacular appearance in the film where she was promptly thrown into the trash but don't worry she's coming back and maybe she'll last for a little bit longer but we will see but despite all the shortcomings of her and her character in the movie, you cannot deny that this pop is definitely one of the coolest of the Star Wars villains. The man they call Sting in his crushed box. I am going to get a lot of crap in the comments about these crushed boxes. But anyway, Sting from WWE. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Sting's cool, right? And I'm a fan of wrestling. That's why I got him. It's a pretty short and sweet story. We're getting deeper and deeper into the ends of this box, but we still have plenty more to go, but not before we talk about Mega Man here from uh, Mega Man. And, um, you know, I think that this pop should have been metallic right out of the box, but uh, no. Instead, they decide to focus on variant after variant after variant of... Um, of Mega Man here in different colors. But we also got Rush and we got Proto Man and Dr. Wily. I would have liked to have seen Zero. I thought that would have been cool. If there has been a Zero, you know, let me know. I don't think there has, but you know, I hadn't been following the pop game as heavily as I used to. So again, as a big gamer, 
Mega Man. He's a classic, so that's why he's a part of my life. Let's get back into Dragon Ball. We've got here Golden Frieza 2015 Funko Summer Convention exclusive. The box is dusty on the inside, but you can still make out Golden Frieza. And, um, you know, I think the rarest one was the Golden Frieza with the red eyes as opposed to the black eyes, but still, it was an exclusive. Hot Topic, I believe, had a decent number of exclusives that year, and this is just one of them that I got. WWE exclusive John Cena. I don't know exactly why. Um, it must be because his hat and his armbands are a certain color. Uh, but yeah, John Cena who, despite being at the very bottom of this bag with everything else and all the other boxes are have crushed or they have dings and dents, John Cena's box looks pretty fine. He doesn't have any weird dings on his box, but that's John Cena, right? LOL, Cena wins every time. But seriously though, I love John Cena. People give him a lot of crap, but man, the guy has earned it all. From one wrestler to another, Rowdy Roddy Piper, a Target exclusive, rest in peace, Hot Rod, and um, him and Ric Flair. Um, I remember really wanting those two pops, and uh, this Roddy Piper is pretty cool. Look at that kilt. Look at that Hot Rod logo. It's just really great. You know, Roddy Piper had a podcast too before he died, and I used to listen to that, and I uh, and I enjoyed that as well. But yeah, um, the rest, as far as the wrestling side of things go, whenever I get around to displaying all these pops, there's always going to be a place for Hot Rod on there. Here's a creepy one for you, the little sister from Bioshock, the Bioshock series, walking around with that syringe in which she uses to suck the, um, Adam, was it? Out of, uh, her little victims, and the big daddy will walk around and protect her as she did that. So this is a very small pop, but it's a very creepy pop, and it kind of needs to be because little sisters, you know, were creepy. Um, so yeah, this is from the, uh, good old... Bioshock video game along with the six inch Big Daddy. I don't know if he's in this bag. We will see but that Big Daddy is definitely my top five favorite pops. I'm kind of getting a little bit freaked out as I dig deeper and deeper into this bag because I don't know if anything's in there. I thought I saw a leg but anyway here's the AT-AT driver a Walgreens exclusive from Star Wars and unlike the Plo Koon and the Re Yeast and another one that I whose name I can't remember right now uh, the AT-AT driver was not as easy to find. He still wasn't hard, but he definitely didn't stick around as long as those other ones did. And, uh, the paint on this guy was eh, the decals were eh, but he's a pretty cool thing, you know? And as a person who is not the hugest fan of Star Wars, you know, the designs of a lot of these heroes and villains is really cool, and that's why I bought them. Oh, man. This did not get the good end of the stick. Here's the 2015 Summer Convention exclusive destroyed Unmasked Captain America's box. Uh, sucks that it had to be this. Wow, because this was uh, an exclusive for the, yeah. But this pop was quite unremarkable, but um, yeah. Dang, look at that box, that is horrible. But so, you know, learn from my mistakes, people. When you want to move around 200 pops and you do decide to put everything in large trash bags, uh, just be a little bit more careful with them. We are down to our last two pops. And I think I know why that Captain America box is the most destroyed out of everything in that bag. Look who was hanging out right next to him and look at the condition of this box from the Winter Soldier. It looks pristine not a scratch or dent or ding on it and he just sits there smug somehow captain america got completely obliterated but the winter soldier still stands tall he stands strong he's got a metal arm it's from civil war i think there's some shenanigans going on inside that bag don't worry me and zelda we're on it we're going to get to the bottom of this and now for the grand finale of part two of Jeremy's gigantic Funko Pop unbagging video. I didn't plan it this way, but I'm so glad that it ended this way. Definitely one of my faves, Crystal Blue Heisenberg 2015 Summer Convention exclusive. This was, to my knowledge, the most highly sought after desired pop that was an exclusive to, was it Hot Topic? 
of all those different exclusives this was the one that people wanted the most it looked it looks so cool just look at that crystal blue meth inspired heisenberg of course from breaking bad and i'm glad that this box did not get completely annihilated so yeah just gotta look at all the other characters we got the Gus Fring with the exploded head, and I don't have any other ones besides that Gus Fring and this Heisenberg here. But yeah, this is a darn good way to end this video. So, this is at least 20 plus minutes of me going through all of my pops and stuff, and I still have two or three more bags to go. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for part three of my gigantic Funko Pop unbagging videos. And if you want to see those and you don't want to miss them, then that means you have to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss them. And it's coming real soon, this week, I promise. Unless something crazy happens, in which case I'll let you know. So that's it. Till next time, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'm Jeremy, and I'll talk to you later.